Hello, scholars. Welcome to American Revolution lesson number seven. Our objectives for today. We will hear about another plan by Parliament and King George III to pay for the French and Indian War. And we will identify how the colonists respond to this plan. We have to start with a look back at our last lesson. As I mentioned at the end of our last lesson, the colonists were definitely feeling frustrated and angry. Their government had placed a tax on their imports, such as sugar and molasses, and it was now allowing officials to search your home or business whenever it felt like, to check to see if you were smuggling, meaning sneaking in, imports and not paying the taxes that you were supposed to be paying on those goods. You'll also remember soldiers were stationed along the Appalachian Mountains, keeping colonists from settling on the west side of them. And Parliament had passed the Quartering Act, which meant the colonies had to provide quarters, places to live, for those soldiers. Yes, when we left off, the colonists were feeling quite, quite frustrated. And in today's lesson, King George III and Parliament go even a step further. Another plan of how to get back the money spent on the French and Indian War. In 1765, Parliament created a new tax by passing what was called the Stamp Act. A Stamp Act placed a tax on almost every kind of printed paper, about 50 different items in all. Under the law of the Stamp Act, you would have to buy special tax stamps, seen here, from a tax collector. Then you would stick one of those onto each of the taxed items that you bought, that you used. So, for example, every time you bought a newspaper, you paid a tax. Every time you bought a copy of your minister's sermon, you'd pay a tax. Every time you bought a calendar, a marriage license, any kind of legal or business document, you had to pay a tax. You even were taxed on a deck of playing cards. So, think about that. Yes, the colonists were frustrated and angry before the passing of the Stamp Act. Now, they were outraged. Let me try to explain a little bit why. Now, you're going to want to listen very carefully to this. The colonists were outraged because it was Parliament passing these laws to tax them, not their own colonial assemblies. What that means, scholars, is the colonists were not getting to elect the members of Parliament, so they were wondering, why does Parliament get to tax them? Parliament, a lawmaking body 3,000 miles away, back in the mother country of Great Britain, taxing them. They said this was taxation without representation. That phrase is going to be very important in our study, scholars. What it means is, the colonists were saying they were being taxed without getting to vote on who was representing them in Parliament and making the laws about the taxes. 
Well, in response to this new plan of Parliament and King George III, it led to the colonists forming a group called the Sons of Liberty. These groups of people called the Sons of Liberty threatened tax collectors. In some cases, they even beat up some of the tax collectors. Now, this, of course, is not virtuous and not okay. Violence on others, not okay, no matter how frustrated you're feeling. Here is a political cartoon that was drawn about Sons of Liberty tarring and feathering and then forcing tea, hot tea, down the throat of a tax collector. Well, in response to all of this treatment, many tax collectors decided the wisest, wisest thing to do was to just get out of town and forget about selling the tax stamps. And this, scholars, was not all that the Sons of Liberty did. They organized a boycott of British goods. A boycott is when people refuse to have dealings with a particular group or country to force a change. In this case, the Sons of Liberty got people to agree not to buy goods from Great Britain. And they said they would continue the boycott of British goods while the Stamp Act was still a law. And there were Daughters of Liberty, too. In order to make the boycott work, the Daughters of Liberty group formed, and they began making their own homemade cloth so that people could boycott the cloth from Great Britain and not buy it, but still have cloth. The Sons of Liberty, Daughters of Liberty, and the many other people who supported the colonists' boycott gave themselves another name. That name? Patriots. And the actions of the Patriots did not stop there. Some of the Patriot leaders called for a meeting, and nine of the 13 colonies sent delegates to that meeting to discuss what to do next. At this meeting, they asked Parliament to repeal, meaning to cancel, to end, to do away with the Stamp Act. This meeting of these delegates from nine of the 13 colonies became known as the Stamp Act Congress. And what was it that they wanted done? They wanted Parliament to repeal the Stamp Act. All these actions by the colonists both surprised and shocked the leaders of the British government. Never before had the colonies acted together against the British government. British leaders did not want this to become a habit. And British merchants and business people were not happy about it either. The boycott was causing them to lose a lot of money. Now, a quick note about these two signs. In Latin, this is in concordia, where is cite sunt, which means in union lies strength. In union lies strength means we're stronger when we work together. Now, the colonies were not really thinking about this idea of working together, being stronger together, but this boycott and this Stamp Act Congress, them working together to bring about change, is the first example of the colonies working together.
They didn't realize they would need to keep doing it and how important it would be to do it. But you're going to see later in our study, this idea of working together, being stronger together, is definitely going to be true in our study. Well, in 1766, only one year after passing that Stamp Act, Parliament did repeal it. The boycott worked. The colonists celebrated with great bonfires. Their efforts had brought an end to the Stamp Act. What they did worked. And everything seemed like it was going to be okay now. They had made a difference. They believed this would be the end to their frustrations toward and their mistreatment from King George III and Parliament. Well, scholars, as we will soon see, the colonists were very wrong about that. It would not be the end of their frustrations nor their mistreatment from the king and parliament. But this is where we're going to stop for today. Checking in on those objectives. So today we heard about another plan by parliament and King George III to pay for the French and Indian War, the Stamp Act. And we identified how the colonists responded to that plan, to the Stamp Act. They boycotted and met as a group and worked together to ask for a repeal. Our assignment for today, open that attached Google form Answer the questions about today's lesson. Remember, you can look back at the slides, listen to the information again. Think of it as a scavenger hunt. Remember, click that submit button at the bottom of the form when you're finished. That's what sends your answers to your teacher. Good luck, scholars, and thanks for joining me for another history lesson.